my name is Madison and welcome back to my channel. Let's hope my camera doesn't die. I'm so excited for today's video because I feel like I have been looking forward to this moment for a long, a long time. I am almost halfway through university, which is absolutely insane. I am finishing up my second semester of my sophomore year here at CU Boulder. I am an aerospace engineering student and I'm excited to show y'all what I'm gonna take next semester. I did this last spring. I don't think I did it last fall for this semester, but I did it last spring for the fall 2020 semester, showing y'all what classes I'd be taking and just registering for classes as a first semester sophomore studying aerospace engineering, which a lot of you really enjoyed, which I was kind of surprised about. And I'm really excited to know that a lot of you are actually interested in watching my more aerospace engineering related content. So I thought I would do the same today, especially because junior year is where it really like, it really gets going. The first class I really, really wanted to take was electronics. That is this ASEN 3300 class right here. This class is technically called Aerospace Electronics and Communications and is arguably one of the hardest courses junior year. From what I've heard, the content isn't necessarily anything outrageous. It's just the fact that you are constantly doing work. The workload is outrageous. This is the one course where you have four hours of lab a week um and two hours of lecture the other courses only have two hours of lab and three hours of lecture um from what i've heard last year they had labs due on monday um pre-labs due on tuesday and then quizzes due wednesdays and then of course they're doing exams and things like that on top of it so that is definitely something to keep in mind I am the type of person that I would so much rather start my day earlier and end earlier than start my day late and end late. Starting my day earlier allows me to maybe go to the barn later, get in some work, or just go relax, take a nap, go to the gym, something like that. I like having to get up out of bed and go and kind of start my day and get going and start up on the right foot instead of dilly-dallying in the morning like I know I would if I didn't have something holding me accountable. So I opted for the 8.30 lab section. This 8.30 a.m. Um, lecture section on Monday and Wednesday was not optional. That is the only lecture time offered for that course. Next up, let's talk about aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is this 33 or 3111 class right here. This was a class I was not quite sure when I wanted to take because this definitely played into the strategy of taking the hardest classes with like other really hard courses um, and just things like that. And I really wanted to make sure I took two, maybe three of the hardest classes for semester, um, but at least two. I didn't want to save two of the harder ones for later. This class is debatably challenging from what I've heard. I've heard some students find it really easy. Others find it really difficult because it heavily relies on Calc 3. And as I've mentioned before, Calc 3 was wanted if not the hardest course I have ever taken um at least for me I really really struggled to wrap my head around the concepts and was going to two different lectures a day until classes went online and there was only one lecture offered so I was going to two different professors to see the material twice in two different ways my second semester or freshman year which was oh my gosh so exhausting um, so I really wanted to take this first semester just because, again, in the off chance that I do fail that course, I have time to retake it and I can redo it. Um, I will definitely be trying to review my Calc 3 this summer, even if it's just going through a set or two of notes every once in a while, like the last week or two of school or the last week or two of the summer. I just really want to be able to put my best foot forward in this course and not let myself fail it because of my inability remem to remember content I at least one point did know. Granted, I got a B in Calc 3. Um, I did not do terrible. I passed the class. I got a B. I will say that openly. However, that was a B I worked my tail end off for. I have never worked harder for a B in my entire life. And that's really frustrating to feel that way, knowing that I'm going into this next course that I struggled so much for that B and now having content build on top of that terrifies me. So um, this is the lecture offered Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Again, three hours of lecture a week for this course. The lab for this class I am taking on Friday morning at 
8 30 a.m again i decided to go for that earlier uh lab slot to get me out of bed get me on campus and get me moving the other lab for this class was offered on tuesday from 3 to 4 50 which i just wasn't a huge fan of i really wanted to have my afternoons free to go to the barn go to work relax that sort of thing again um and i really like having a routine so having an 8 30 a.m class five days a week is going to be the kind of thing that gets me up out of bed and gets me going and i can get my body on its own body clock um and make myself more comfortable with waking up earlier every day again getting in that routine the final aero class that i will be taking next fall is orbital mechanics and attitude dynamics this class is one that I have no idea what to expect for. I was debating taking this in aircraft dynamics, but opted to take aircraft dynamics in the spring. Aircraft dynamics, I've heard, is incredibly challenging. I was gonna take this first semester just so I could retake it in the spring if I needed to, but I feel relatively confident about the two other classes I will be taking in the spring, which are thermodynamics and structures. And feel like if I can have an easier time in thermo and structures, I can really put in the energy into aircraft dynamics. Um, that again goes into me saying I did not want to take all three of the hardest classes or the classes I thought I would struggle with the most in one semester and wanted to spread it out a little bit more. So I'm a little bit nervous about only really having one chance to take aircraft dynamics in case something goes wrong. But hopefully because the other two courses I am taking it with, I'm hopefully going to find a little bit easier just because I've done well in the prereqs for those courses, which is the intro thermo course. Um, and then statics, I did really well in both of those. I'm hoping that can allow me to put more time and energy into aircraft dynamics and hopefully pass it on the first shot. So this class here again monday wednesday friday with three lectures and then i'm doing this tuesday lab slot here um the other option for this lab was later in the day on tuesday i believe it was like 3 35 or something like that and i just decided i would rather kind of get my day over with um than have this kind of gap there again that's like an afternoon I could go spend working at the lab until 6 if I really wanted to or I could totally easily go to the barn at that time. I do really like getting out of my apartment and going somewhere else to study but that is I'm saying that in the middle of COVID. I also know last year there'd be days when I'd be on campus for almost 11, 12, 13 hours doing clubs and things like that and it was just exhausting and being on campus five days a week for like eight hours a day straight is really tiring. So I really wanted to make sure I had a chance to come home and do something else if I wanted to, or if I was gonna be at work to not get exhausted by it. So I decided if I were to take the later lab and I'd have this gap from about 10.30 to 3.30 of doing who knows what, I feel like I just get a lot burned out more. So that's where I chose to take that. And last but not least, I will be taking this special topics computer science course right here. Y'all have heard this a bajillion times, but I love cybersecurity. Um, I got introduced to it my senior year of high school, ended up winning a few competitions. Um, and that's something I'm kind of proud of still, even to this day, just because especially women in cybersecurity, that is very, very rare. Um, so getting to learn and just immerse myself in that content, being able to go compete was so, so, so cool. And especially getting to the point where I felt really confident and really enjoyed it. So I have been dying to take some cybersecurity courses, finally have taken all the prereqs that I got to take this special topics computer science course. Typically they offer an intro to cybersecurity class. Um, in the fall but it's not being offered this year for whatever reason so they're offering the special topics class as a replacement i don't really understand i guess it gives you the same credit to, like whether or not you take the intro to cybersecurity class or this computer security class so i'm assuming the content is somewhat similar i'm still debating if i want to work up the prereqs to take ethical hacking my senior year um, doing that would probably require me to take a summer course this summer and I'm just not sure if it's worth it. Um, but this class seems pretty cool. Um, 
talks about cryptography, web security, network security, application security, um, and then hopefully there's gonna be some really cool labs. I'm really excited for um, labs. I did one capture the flag competition in high school, which is more of like active hacking. And then I competed in Cyber Patriot that I ended up actually winning the state competition for the female category and getting second overall, which was really, really cool. And that is a security like, um, network and computer security instead of like active hacking competition. So I'm really hoping I can get to do a little bit of both of those things. I really like security, but I would also really like to have more experience um, doing like active hacking. I know gray and black hat hacking would probably all be in like a simulation. Honestly, probably all of this would be in like a sim or a virtual machine, but it still would be really cool to get and go and do that again just because I miss it and it was so much fun and it was like my favorite part of high school. So that is what I am taking. For the CU Aerospace curriculum, there are six junior level courses students seem to take in order to take senior level courses. Each of these classes is four credits, so a total of 24 credits. You can break that up and do three classes or 12 credits a semester, which is what most students try to do. I have heard of some students maybe taking four in the fall and the possibility that they fail one and need to push one back to the spring and end up taking three in the spring. Or students might take three and three, fail a fall class or two, and end up having to take four in the spring, which sounds absolutely horrible and I'm praying I don't do that so there is definitely some strategy that goes into this just because professors are not guaranteed um, and they might mix up for the spring semester right now we only know the professors that will be teaching in the fall additionally if you know you're really good at one class or another you might want to save your really easy classes for the spring just in case you fail a really hard class in the fall and need to push that back but then there's also that possibility that maybe taking the three hardest classes all at once would be horrible, but you also don't want to save that hard class until spring and not have the chance to retake it. Again, so much strategy and thought goes into this, but I think I've kind of mastered what I want to do. Now on top of those 24 junior level era courses, students also have to complete 15 professional electives between their sophomore and senior years, or 15 credits of professional electives which depending on what you choose to get those in, those might be total easy fun, maybe more of like a blow off class. Some of them are absolutely horrible. And I unfortunately have kind of chosen to go down that horrible route, some may say. Um, Y'all know by now, I'm doing a computer science minor, which means I had to take 21 computer science credits, which luckily covers all of my professional electives but my roommate and so many of my friends are getting to take these super fun, super cool astronomy classes and like oceanography classes and all sorts of like cool, spacey, atmospheric kind of related science classes that sound really fun and are not gonna have the type of labs and maybe the mental strain as a computer science class. So I'm currently taking data structures, which I've heard arguably is one of the hardest computer science classes in the department, which I am praying that is true. I'm praying it's the weed out class because knock on wood, I am doing, that's one of my best grades I've ever had in college. So knock on wood, that's the hardest because that would be really nice if everything's just like downhill from there or like easier from there, but um, we'll see. So. Um, and then students, of course, have to take their humanities courses, which some may have come in with a lot of them done. Some might, some students may have come in with none of them done. Um, so those have to be kind of filtered and placed into those junior level courses as well. The goal though, is that by your junior year, actually not even the goal, you cannot enroll in junior level courses unless you have passed Calc 1, 2, 3 differential equations with linear algebra, physics 1 and 2 by the time you enroll and of course all of your other aero courses but those are the prereqs so the goal is that by junior year you already have all of your prereqs done outside of aerospace so another thing that went into me deciding when i wanted to take my classes was me working i currently have two jobs i work as an undergraduate engineer for a kind of research engineering lab 
I really wanted to make sure I had some big chunks in my day in order to be able to go and do that research and do my work with the group. Um, and then I'm also an aerospace engineering ambassador that y'all have heard about. That is a lot more relaxed job. Um, with COVID and everything going on, I've just primarily been running the live chat and I do mail and other odd jobs in the admin office. But in a typical semester, we sit at the lobby desk of the aerospace building and provide tours um, and just help people and with questions and things like that. So that is a lot more relaxed. I do not need to block out three, four, five, six hours of a day to go do that job. I can do an hour here or an hour there. So I try to kind of keep that in mind when making my schedule. I think I said this last time, but at least at, in my opinion, this is all in my opinion, with CU's curriculum, I feel like you truly can't call yourself an aerospace engineering major until you take at least your first semester sophomore year because up until that point you're taking the same classes as 80 percent of the other engineering students at this university so your physics classes your basic calc classes your first year computing class just things like that there's very little diversity and at that point you really haven't proven yourself as an aerospace specifically aerospace engineering student so I am proud to say I've made it this far, assuming I pass all my classes this, this semester, this is what I will be taking next semester. Knock on wood, things are going really well. Um, I, worst case scenario, in case I absolutely bomb one of my finals, the two hardest classes that I'm taking right now that there is a possibility that I maybe could fail like, again if I really like bomb the final or something are actually both offered over the summer which is really nice if I just need that backup or that cushion to have like a little sense of security because at least at CU the aerospace program is completely linear so you cannot take your like second semester sophomore courses until you pass your first semester ones but the first semester sophomore classes are only offered in the fall which means if you fail them you have to wait an entire year to retake them and you're automatically put on five-year track so i want to say for the first time ever both of the spring aerospace classes are being offered in the summer which is really nice so if students fail those classes or have to drop for whatever reason they have a chance to retake it without being put on a five-year track regardless i shouldn't need to do that i am on the wait list for my dynamics class just to be safe i did really well in the last exam um and i'm keeping my fingers crossed for the third one as well as the final but the final is worth 25 percent of my grade and i've never had a final worth that much so that's a little scary but um yeah i will stop rambling let's go <laughs> i'm sorry that video was so long you guys i really appreciate you watching and sticking around to the end if you have i'm really excited for my classes next semester i know they're gonna be a lot of work but i also know they're gonna be really fun and this is what i love so i'm excited to bring y'all along with and i will see you next time peace out bye